Um, okay, this is like back to the 80s for me, really. Uh, started in this lark, or certainly shops, in 1983. And this is one of my favourite amps ever from Martin. This is the JCM800. Um, it's a single channel. It's just crank up and go. It does have the master volume on these, so you can get a really nice, nasty sound at fairly low level. Even though it's 100 watts, usual 4 EL34. It's in the output stage. Um, it's a very basic but amazing amp. These days they have an effects loop. They didn't when I was a lot younger. And uh, yeah, as I said, one of my favourite amps um, used on God knows how many albums. Um, and uh, as it's back to the 80s, I'm just going to show you something. I started my first shop in 1983 when I was 24, boring but true. In 1988, uh, these crazy guitars came out by a Japanese company called Ibanez. Ibanez were always good guitars, but they weren't popular until the RG and the Gem range. When I first saw this, I thought, what the hell is this? It's crazy. It's, it's nuts. Um, they become very, very collectible. I absolutely adore it. I know it's pink. They did lots of colours, as you guys out there know. This one's in crazy, ridiculous condition. I finished setting this up um, a couple of days ago. Um, I stayed here late because I was so excited. I really was. And it plays and sounds unbelievable. Well, that's probably the phone ringing for someone trying to buy it right now. I know. I know to, to a lot of you out there, you think, oh, God, Jeff sells all these wonderful guitars, these classy guitars. What the hell is he doing with this? Well, I apologise. This is a great guitar. Close your eyes if you don't like the colour, play it, hear it, and you might know what I'm on about. So Jeff, you, you actually collect gems, don't you? Um, do I collect gems? Well, you kind of do because on your ceiling uh, you have four of them. Um, one, two, yeah, I do, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a secret gemaholic. Yeah. Okay, it is in crazy condition, there's hardly any knocks anywhere, it, it's really good condition. For some reason, the cavity plate's missing, but pff, you can buy one of those from Ibanez if you want to. Um, I've actually ordered a PRS private stock um, that I ordered in conjunction with Paul, and um, I've asked them to make it without the cavity plate on the back, I quite like it like that. Um, I have to say, so do I, and actually I've removed the cavity plates on almost every guitar I own. I don't know why, it's a silly thing, isn't it? No. I think it's so that you can get the, sp the springs in a hurry if you need to. Yeah, maybe. Anyhow, it is, um, it's a sweet piece. Disappearing pyramid inlay, which is nice. fretware either, as a matter of fact there's next to none, uh, although the neck feels very very worn and, and um, old. So the previous owner's just loved this under his bed in a case, hasn't he? Yeah, sure, it's got, it's got a lovely case with it as well. Next time we'll hook up the rack system, because <laughs> I managed to get an old ADA MP1 and a Rocktron in Telefax just waiting for a cool power amp to come along. And then we really will go back to um, a, a mad era in the 80s. Oh, no, I just think they're very, very exciting guitars. And for, for us guys in the 80s, when we were selling wonderful guitars like Strats, Les Pauls, all the usual suspects, um, these crazy guys came out with something so different and for us it was very, very exciting. Um, but they weren't just different, they turned out to be rather good and they're now classic guitars. <laughs> 